Okay, hello everyone. I'm back with a little music tutorial. This is kind of twofold. It's kind of like how to make a song your own. But really what this is, what I'm doing right now is I'm transposing it. Um, the song is uh, Gal's Poles, which is, turns out is an old folk uh, song. I never knew that. And I've been looking around on YouTube to find a lot of different uh, versions. The original version, turns out, is by Lead Belly, or, the, you know, it's an old English folk song or something, but the, you know, the earliest, uh, I guess, recording, or, you know, he's credited with something, uh, starting, you know, the first one to make popularize, probably, uh, this song. But anyways, um, I went and listened to Lead Belly, it's in B, listened to Page and Plan Unplugged, and it's in G, and I think I want to play it in D. <laughs> So, you know, but I want to listen to as many versions as I can. And we used to do this when we hosted the jam night at the bar. You know, we'd take songs, listen to as many versions as we possibly can, and then try to make it your own. And maybe pick up a little bit of from each or get just get an idea. So that's what I'm doing here. But I think I'm going to D. And I'm going to use this traditional chorus uh, from the page and plant. And I'm just transposing it. So this is another little what this is about, too. Um, so you can either, uh, I start in G and I want to get to D. So you can either think of it as four steps down or five steps up. And for me it's easier to think of it as five steps up because of course if you go G, you know, that's four steps down to D. So and then if you're in G, it's easier for me to think of it as just the one, three, five real quick. One. Or fifths, you know, because I play fifths a lot. So I'm going, I'm thinking of it as fifths. I've got this uh, first line. This is that, uh, that chorus. And I'm going to go ahead and do the second line. So I've got a G, which becomes a, the fifth, which is D. Next note uh, chord is C, which its fifth would be G. Uh, F, which its fifth would be C. C, which its fifth would be G. Now, before I go any further, I want to test it out and make sure um, I'm going to play it from here to there. And this is my little chicken scratch that I'd use uh, in bands. I've got a whole little, I finally started making a book where I just, uh, it's mainly just chords. And if there's a little lead line, I might, you know, write it down, write it out in notes. But you have to be able to see it in the dark if you're playing somewhere. And uh, But this is my little chicken scratch. So these are chords. I'm just going to play this little line here and see if it starts out right. Okay, so that sounds right, and then there's just those last two, so we go, let's continue on, F, fifth, one, three, five, C, again, C, G, fifth, D, and then I have this B flat and C, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm going to write it down here, F, I think that might just be a little innuendo thing, so that would be F and G. All right, so let me just play that whole run now all the way through. That's what that is. Um, there's something not quite right here. But I'm going to listen to it more, work it. Okay, so I've transposed the uh, chords. That's how to transpose chords, and that's how to kind of get your own feel. I'm going to try to post this song when I get it done, and you'll be able to hear how I've done it. I'm, I'm really thinking of really slowing it way, way, way down uh, and with vocals and harmonies, but um, I want to still know the basics. I, this is the skeleton that we build uh, the layers on. So here we are. Uh, I'll tune back in a little later. Okay, I'm back and I've been working on this Neil, um, not Neil Young, the, um, it's for a Neil Young contest actually, that's why I said that, but it's not Neil Young at all. It's Gal's Pole, which is, you know, public domain. It's an old folk song. I just, there's so many versions and um, so what I've finally done, I have my here and I was trying to like scribble all over it. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. You know, and all my little side notes, and uh, and then it's just getting too uh, too complex. So I started again. I'm sure this will be scribbled up by the time I'm done with it too. But this is going to be my arrangement. There's too many dang verses. That's the problem. Uh, so I got it down to you know, uh, one. First, he he asks all these different people to help him. You know, so what I just did was the friend, and then the brother helps me. You know, I, I skipped all that other stuff about your mommy and your pappy and all these people. <laughs> you know, it's like too long. It's it's long, you know, and it's it can get boring, I think. Um, so he asked the friend. The friend doesn't bring it. 
I went back to the Lead Belly uh, lyrics. I, I combined different lyrics too because they're not the same any at all. Uh, so this is where I'm at now. The other thing I've taken liberty with is they all just do um, the main chord is a major and then they go to the minors. Although Page is doing something crazy, you know, he's doing some kind of crazy whatever diminished something. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it minor. I'm just going to keep it all minor. Uh, and go from there. Lead Belly, I'm pretty sure he's uh, in the majors too. He's playing so fast. He's like, <laughs> you gotta check that out on YouTube. Um, but anyways, um, so here I've got my major, my format. Now I've just gotta start laying it down. I want to put in some string parts and then you know a lot of harmonies and everything. So I've taken all sorts of liberties. I've changed a major to a minor. I've uh, took some lyrics from Page and Plant, some lyrics from Lead Belly. So I'm really making this my own, and that's the you know, that's the goal, and that's what I'm shooting for. So um, I'll let you hear it when it's done. All right, so I'm back working on this uh, Neil Young um, folk song thing. So I did decide to go with Gallup's Pole. Gallup's Pole. I uh, will put a link to the playlist of what I found of the different artists. Um, I pulled a lot from the Zeppelin, and I made it real minor and morose, because it's a sad song. It's not, uh, you know, some of these, they're like, skip to Lou, you know, they're just, <laughs> it's, it sounds so happy, and it's pretty, I didn't really ever delve that deep into the lyrics, it's really a sad song, though, uh, so I think it's, the minor sounds better. I've laid down the keyboard track, so what I'm going to show you, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to put in a little bass stuff, and for, I always play bass with my left hand, just to throw back to, you know. I actually played left hand bass a couple times and but it never sounds as good as a real bass player but for this intent purposes it's going to be okay but i always go to the left hand for my bass lines still i found uh, i want a little softer bass i found like a nice softer bass because uh, that i like that blends um and with bass parts, you know, a lot of times it's, it's kind of that pentatonic thing too, but it's almost one, it's these fifths. Those are typical bass kind of things. But most of the time they don't go much, in a regular song, they won't go much out of an octave. I mean, bass solos, yeah, that's another story and everything. And Yeti Lee, there's exceptions to that rule, of course. But for this thing, you know, standard bass stuff is kind of like right here. So I'm not going to be doing anything that extravagant. Okay, so I'm going to try. I'm having a little trouble on that break, but I'm going to go. Just I wanted to show you this, and I'll play a little bit. I'm going to. You'll be able to hear the piano track in a minute. So here we go. I played around a little bit. I'm, I'm gonna have to listen to it later. I was I was getting a little leady with it, but I like that too. Instead of going to the G, which is the root, throwing that B in. I think that has add a nice tone to the chord. And um, so there you go. That's the uh, bass line. You could hear a little of the piano line. I'm sure I'm gonna post this. Uh, it'll be posted on Talent House, but I'll sure I post the finished song too when it's done. Okay, everyone, I'm back. So again, this is my second. Uh page of notes. I'm, I'm very much at the end of this, um, the end of this. I'm going to move this camera back a little bit more. There we go. I'm very much at the end of this uh, thing. I, all I've got to do is lay down the lead. Uh, because this is for a contest and the deadline, you know, I had like a little over a week's, I didn't hear about it, you know, until like a week ago. So I got like a week and two days to pull this together. I think it turned out really good, but it's forcing me to like just, you know, okay, you can't fuss over this forever. This is final, do it, done. Um, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I mean, it's very different from... I went through again and list, uh, listened to all the versions last night, and it's very different from all of them. So I truly did, I think, accomplish the task of making it my own. 
I just wanted to show you real quick. This is my, <laughs> yeah, I remember I had this uh, note sheet to start with and it was getting so crowded and I had the, the nice new one. Now this one has <laughs> got everything. Uh, there's just a few things that, you know, I reworded it because it wasn't working out rhythmically. And over here, this is a good practice to get into too. Even though like in this case, I know when I'll be done because I have to turn it in. Um, but there's times when I thought, oh, I'm done with this. I won't, you know, and I didn't write down the patch that I used. And then you try to go back and you can't find that. You spend a whole day trying to find that patch again. <laughs> so I, I just always make a note. This is the bass patch I use, the main piano, the uh, strings. And the last thing I'm going to do, I left a little break for a little instrumental lead. So I'm going to throw that down. Uh, I've got like a day and a half to finish this. Uh, but the main thing on this is really the vocals. And it really did come out cool. I mean, maybe even better than I anticipated. I kind of put them in a round very eerie, very, uh, you know, morose and fitting the song. You know, you're about, to, you're about to be hung. It's pretty scary stuff. It's not a happy song. So here it is. I'm going to post everything. Uh, I'm going to post, I'm going to post the video. I'm going to post a link to the talent house competition. If you see this before this competition is up, um, sometime in June here of 2012, then go vote for me. That would be great. Uh, if you like it. And but I'm also going to put a link to the uh, playlist. I did it on my other channel, under my other channel's name, my kids' channel name. So, Learning Songs for Kids. But I, I'll put a link to it. So you can listen to everything that I drew from, or what I, where I started from when I listened, and then listen to what I finally ended up with. So I'm pretty happy with it. For the short amount of time, the, it came out pretty cool. I mean, there's little things, but it's, it's good enough. So, uh, thanks for coming along with me, and listen to my song if you have time. I'd appreciate it. Any comments? Thanks. Okay, I'm back again with one more, uh, one more last-minute change in the uh, classic uh, American Classics uh, contest for um, Gallows Pole here. And uh, well, what happened was I left a space for a lead when I laid down the first tracks, and I did, I don't, I did want to put a lead in. And I was planning on, like, uh, because it's after, and it's in the script here, or the lyrics, I should say. You know, the first time he says, uh, can you get, the friend, can you get me silver? He couldn't get it. And there's a lead break. So I wanted it to express, you know, uh, sorrow or something. But some of that big organy sound might be kind of cool in there, you know. Uh, Yeah, that, that glad it fifth sounds like agony <laughs> or something in a way. But yeah, I try to lay down, I did a few things. Uh, what I do too when I do that is I usually, uh, when I'm putting down a lead, what I usually do, so what I'll do with a lead is I'll just wing it. You know, I'll just wing it a bunch of times, tape them, and you know, sometimes I'll find little things that I like and keep in, like I'll have somewhat of a structure, but I usually like to leave some space for some open improv too, but this is, you know, we've got like two bars or whatever. It's a small little lead break. So I was playing around with that organ, you know. I, I already switched it to the other uh, patch. And it just wasn't flying. And here's another technique that I didn't really cover in the um, lead, doing, playing lead keyboard uh, series. So I may put this up as a separate post too. But so what I ended up doing, I was going, I ended up using this real orchestral sound and I did a little technique that's, uh, I have to give it up to the master of this technique is Tony Banks from Genesis. And it's that rhythmic and you're like uh, syncopated um, and it's probably not in frame. I'm going to try to do something similar down here, but I basically went, you know, something like this and then I was going. So you're using two hands and a lot of his he'll use overhand stuff too and uh, that's something to really experiment on but that's a way that you can really play a lot of notes and uh, that's not exactly what I was doing it was up higher too or you know I'll do that too you can do overhand you know you could even do something like that yeah, I was doing something like that and it, it sounds really cool and um, it I think that I think that you know, that gives the air of tension because in the story, you know, after the, he can't get the goal, he's faced with hanging again. So he's worried, you know, and so instead of this screaming agony, that to me is kind of more like worry. You know, like your mind is like, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then we go on to the next verse. So that's another little, you know, 
Or you could like move two chords, like uh, say a D minor and a C. And you know, kind of hit different notes of each chord, break them apart like that. And that's another cool thing to do in leads. Uh, you may, Sometimes it takes a little ahead of time thinking, but if it'll work with the two chords that you're playing in, for instance, like that I'm playing in a D minor and C. So, you know, I know that those notes are in there. <laughs> so I just kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to do live improv, but if for something like a more worked out solo, which is what I've done here, it could be a cool thing. Okay, so be sure to check out the finished version and the other versions too. There's some really great stuff there too. Besides uh, Page and Plant and Lead Belly, there's a couple other really cool, uh, all different too, all different. And mine came out completely different too. So see your best laid plans. I thought it was going to be an organ solo and I, the whole thing came out way differently, not way, but quite different than I originally thought it would or, you know, heard it in my head, but in a, in a good way, you know, in a good way. And that's something, you know, when you play with a band, a lot of times that'll happen. Um, you know, you have an idea and you let them lay their stuff on it and the whole song changes and it's better. Usually it's better. You know, you have to be able to, willing to give that up to a band if you're going to, you might have to be willing to sacrifice it and let them do that. But in this case, it was all me and it still came out different. <laughs> So go figure. All right, so that's all for now. I think I've got my final version of it, and you can, I'll leave a link so you can hear the final version. Thanks for watching.